Miss Williams going to make a present to the Phantom? Can't prove it by me. Bet you even though he gets you before you get to Red Rock. Make it five to one, he might take you up. All right. No, I said I might. Make way, man. This is one time this gold has gone through. Now, you boys keep your eyes open. Ride ahead and make sure there's nobody in the pass. Don't worry. If that phantom starts anything, we'll blow him to pieces. All right, boys. Go get your horses. Who is this phantom they're talking about? Nobody knows. I'm nervous. I don't want to lose what little money I've got. You won't. The phantom is too smart to try to fight these armed guards. Well, I hope so. No excuses this time. I'm giving you plenty of help. Don't worry. I'll have my finger on the trigger all the way through. Are you ready? Ready to go. All right, get going. Good luck. Get up, boy. Get out of that. Get out of that. Get out of that. Come. You all know what to do now. Remember, no killing. I want you to fire over their heads. Lady, nothing to worry about. That rifle gets pretty heavy after a while. You better toss it away and put your hands up. Come on, I'm out. Now, if it's not too much trouble, you can hand me that box the bank is shipping. Come on, hurry it up. Thanks. Oh. When you get back to town, would you mind giving this note to Mr. Williams? With my compliments? I'm sorry to inconvenience you, ma'am. Be very careful with that purse, ma'am. You know, all bandits don't ride horses. The stage is leaving in a minute, so you better get in. Where are your manners? Allow me. Where 
Well, you can get back to town now. Wait a minute. What are you trying to do, choke this horse to death? You know that hames up off the collar? That's better. Get up! Get up there! Get up! We didn't have a chance. He decoyed the guards and stuck us up. He gave me this for you. <laughs> Where's Pendleton? I gotta see him right away. There he is now. What's all the excitement about? See here, Pendleton. I won't stand for any more of this. Any more of what? Why, the, the Phantom just robbed me of $25,000. Where'd he stop you this time? Just as we reach the top of the pass. Now, if you don't stop this fellow once and for all, Pendleton, we're gonna get a sheriff that will. Well, he didn't leave me his address. And I don't know just what mountain top he's sitting on. But I'll get a party together and go out after him. About time. <laughs> Nice. We're going after the Phantom. Get your horse. Hey, Mac. Never mind that, Shave. We're going after the Phantom. Okay. Hey, Abner. Get your gun. The stage has been held up again. All oh, right. It's taken them quite a while to open this thing. There's plenty of tracks here. You take and Dave and follow the single track. The rest of you follow them others. All right. Looks like he's headed for the hollow. But we can head him off by cutting through Lost Canyon.
He must have been hit. Come on. Dad. I had a brush with William's men. We've got to get out of here. We'll both go. I'll help you. This Braddock is through riding. If I were going to be here, I wouldn't want you to leave. But... You mean you, you're going to... Well, we've all got to go sometime. Trail. I wish you'd look out and see if someone's coming. Oh, I tried to fight him in court. There's no use. 
He had too much money. Too many crooked lawyers. I know that Williams cheated you. Yes, but I could never prove it. The old timers are all for you, Slim. They know you've got a raw deal. You hurt much, Slim? Tell me, will you? Will you do me a favor? Tell Williams that there'll be another Braddock on Friday. Like the town is deserted. Where is everybody, Parker? South Courthouse listening to the trial. What trial? The one between Williams and Brandon. Thanks. days after we defaulted, why the bank closed down on it. Jefferson had sold them the claim he had against us. They took possession and wouldn't let any more work be done. The bank was merely protecting itself, Your Honor. They stopped us from getting out any ore. Without ore, how could we meet the note? You are here to answer questions, Brennan, not ask them. How did they take possession? By putting armed guards all over the place. I guess I ain't cut out to fight the law. But if I was 25 years younger and herding with my old pal, Slim Braddock, he'd know what to do. He had his own way of handling things. And I don't know but what is best. I object to that remark, Your Honor. The witness is trying to discredit the motives of my client. Objection sustained. I can't alter the law on your behalf. Didn't you tell me you expected some money? I object. Your only interest is to collect the amount of this judgment for your client, is it not? Yes or no? Why, yes, of course. That's what I want to know. Objection overruled. What about that money? It'll be in on the next stage from Vegas. Enough coming to pay the bank? Yes. Will 24-hour extension be long enough? Plenty. 24-hour extension granted. But you're not right, object. Objection overruled. Court adjourned. that package, Mark Pete Brennan. And hurry it up. Now get going and don't look back.
Don't try anything like that. Now, if it isn't too much trouble, I'll take that package. I said the package. Thanks, boys. Ain't you ever going to use your brain? But he's got the money. And you were going to shoot him down right here in town. Put that gun away. Brennan's place a couple miles out of town. You take the first turn to your left. Thanks. That fellow want you were talking to. Looking for Brennan. Did you hear about the holdup? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tough break for Pete. Sure is. Well, so long. We've got his time before it gets to Brennan. I've got to see William. But the sheriff will get him, then everything will be all right. Thank you. Bring in the rest of the stuff so we can check it up. Something you want in there? Well, the faster you get your hands in the air, the longer you're going to live. 
turn around. Let's get a look at you. Well, what do you got to say for yourself? Well, I... I was just shooting at a deer. <laughs> Must be a trained one if you expect to find him in that saddlebag. Say, hey, listen. My boss is a right reasonable sort of fellow. Uh, maybe you can make a deal with him. Well, I'm a right unreasonable sort of fellow. And I don't make deals. You mean there's no chance of us getting together? Not a chance. But I can't see there's much either one of us can do about it, so you better get going. Just a minute. You won't need these. The deer season's closed. Don't you remember me? I'm the man who bumped into you yesterday, in the courthouse. Oh, yes. You're the man who said he just drifted into town. That's right. Drifting out again? Well, as a matter of fact, I was on my way to see your father. You mind if I ride along? Well, I... Thanks. Dad, someone here to see you. Pete Brennan? Yes, I'm Pete Brennan. Ever know a man named Braddock? Tim's eyes. And that's his nose. Tim Braddock. Boy, you look just like your father did when he was a young man. If I'd known you were a Braddock, I never would have brought you here. Why, Helen, Tim's only... We're in trouble enough without having one of the Braddocks here. I wish you'd stayed away. His father got you into trouble years ago, and now he's here to do the same thing all over again. Now, honey, there's nothing to worry about. Oh, yes, there is. The money you expected is gone. The stage was held up. Now you won't be able to pay the bank. Hold up? Yes. That's one of the reasons I'm here. I drifted into town yesterday and stopped in at the courthouse. I heard you tell the judge you were expecting money on the next stage, so I... So, you're the man who held up the stage. No, I'm the man who held up the men who held up the stage. Here you are, Pete. You're slim son, all right. You've got a way of fighting for what you think is right. Of course, you never stop to think that we might have such a thing as law. I've always found the law never works for the little fellow. So, you take the law in your own hands. Well, I think... If you were really thinking, you wouldn't be doing so much talking, and maybe a couple of hungry men would get something to eat. Still has the same temper she had when she was a little freckle-faced kid. I hate the name of Braddock. I knew a time when you didn't. When? The day you promised to marry me. I promised to marry you? I suppose you don't remember kissing me and telling me you'd love me forever. Oh, I was eight years old then. That doesn't count. A promise is a promise. Isn't it, Pete? It seems it should hold. Well, well a woman always has the right to change her mind. <laughs> Williams in? Yes. Who will I say is here to see him? Never mind. How many times must I tell you I don't want to be disturbed? Get out. If it's not too much trouble, you can give me a receipt for this. talk about reincarnation, but it hasn't happened yet. I'm Tim Braddock, Slim's son. Now, if you reach for a pen instead of that gun, you're longer. 
Find money. Where did you get this? Don't you know? This is outrageous. You will find there's a law in this country. Just now I happen to be that law, and what I say goes. You stole this money. Of course I stole it. You're not going to say anything about it. This is one of the most crooked deals that was ever attempted. Certainly it's a crooked deal, because you made it a crooked business. Brennan doesn't know how to keep step with you, but I do. You think you can take the law in your own hands? That's what your father thought. But I fought him and I licked him, and I'll do the same to you. Suppose we settle our personal differences another day and another place. Just now, come on, give me that receipt. You to one of us go under if it takes my last cent. And that's just about what it'll take. I wonder what he's doing in the back. What are you talking about? That fellow that just came out of the bank. See him down there? Who is he? He's the bird that got Brennan's money. Are you sure? Come on. Uh, who was the man that just left here? I don't know, Mr. Jepson. He was talking to Mr. Williams. Williams in his office? Yes. Oh, All right, Williams. Clayton tells me the man that held him up just left here. Yeah, his name is Braddock. He paid Brennan's note. Hmm. That's bad. Why? We finished the tunnel from mine on quite a lot of land beyond your southern boundary, haven't you? Yes, but I wasn't figuring on including that in the safe. Why not, Dad? Well, the kind of thought I'd like to keep it, to have something to fall back on. Dad, sell it all, please. Sorry, Pete, I didn't know you were busy. Don't go, Tim. Come on in. Meet Jack Stanley and Carol Jepson. Tim Braddock. How do you do? How are you, sir? Getting ready to get back in the harbor? Dad's work again. He's going to sell the mine. Stanley wants to buy me out. I didn't know you thought of selling. When did you show him the mine? I didn't. Flying sight unseen? Well, I, uh... He's already examined it. When? Williams took him through the mine a week ago. Williams? Yes. Do you mind if I speak to Pete privately a minute? Not at all. Who's Stanley? Today's the first time I ever saw him. Was anyone watching Williams while he was going through the mine? What are you driving at? Suppose he's discovered something you don't know anything about and sent Stanley out here to buy it. I don't think that's any concern of yours. Have you forgotten what you were told about thinking? You really want to sell? Certainly he does. A little girl to be seen and not heard. Don't listen to him, Dad. He'll only get you into trouble. I wonder if Williams is behind this offer. Either Williams or somebody pretty close to him. Sorry, Stanley. Sale is off. If the price isn't right, maybe I can raise it a little. Nope, not interested. Well, I'll be in town for a few days in case you change your mind. I got some bad news, Pete. They're going in a new tunnel. Much damage done? I didn't stop to investigate. Thought you'd want to look at it. Kelly, you want to ride out with us? No, I, I don't think I'd better. I've got an important engagement in town. Come on, Tim.
this wasn't any accident. These uprights have all been cut. Dunn nearly caught me. I fired a couple of shots, and I told him I saw somebody running away. You're sure he didn't suspect anything? Not a chance. Now, the first thing to do is reinforce this shoring, get this mess cleared out here, and then we'll see what's what. All right, Tim, I'll get the boys on it right away. There'll be a fellow named Bailey out here to see you tomorrow. He's a queer duck, but he knows his business. Let him look the place over. Well, how will I know him? He'll ask for you. Guard! Hey, guard! Guard! Hey, guard! Someone? It's about time to show. No wonder they want this dump blowed up. I don't think you know. That's the trouble with fellows like you. You don't think. You're satisfied to be dumb guards and make four bucks a day. Why don't you use your head for something else besides parking your ears? Now take me. I use my noodle. Oh, you do, do you? You said it. I got my start from old man. He was a powder monkey, but he didn't use his noodle. And he didn't last long. One day he's working with powder all around him. And what do you think he does? What? Lights his pipe. That plot was okay. But then he throws the burning match into a pile of giant black. And he disappears in a puff of smoke. But that gives me an idea. Oh, it does? Sure. Even then, I was using a noodle. I figured if powder can do that to a man, it can do it to buildings, ships, mines, anything at all you wanted to get rid of. Well, that was using your noodle. You're telling me, brother? But I gotta be careful. I got a reputation. Me workers known. What do you think would happen if I was seen around here just before this joint went bluey? I haven't any idea. The dicks would put two and two together. And the answer wouldn't be four. It'd be Bailey. And Bailey is me. You know what time it is? About 10 o'clock. 10 to 10. And you were supposed to meet me here at 8. I figured this job to go up at 12, but we'll never make it now. Hold that. I'll set up a tree. That'll be about right. Oh, I'm sorry, Bailey, but oh, let's get in the mine and get it over with. Wait a minute. Don't rush me, because when I'm rushed, my work becomes faulty. Wait. The box. Wait a minute. I suppose you think blowing up a mine's like lighting a match. Don't you notice a technique in this business? It's something you've got to devote your whole life to. Well, I didn't realize there was so much to blowing up anything. You would. I suppose if you were going to do the job, you'd hop right down into the mine, spread the stuff any place at all, and start running. Well, that's the only thing to do, isn't it? Listen, an expert looks the surface over first. And then, then he's got to find out which way the wind is blowing. For instance, See? It's coming in from over there. You've got to follow the direction of the wind. Come on. The draft turns at this corner. That's the first place you've got to block up if you want to get a double jolt out of your stuff. Everything has got to be set on time. Just right. Look at the kind of equipment they give me. A kitchen clock. And I asked for a perfect timepiece. That means I gotta set this thing. Hold the box. Four hours ahead ought to get it. They make these cheap things to kid us into thinking we're getting more shut eye in the mornings. But they don't realize how tough they're making it for fellas like me. It's all right now, isn't it? Sure. You just gotta use the old noodle. Come on. 
Let's look the rest of this joint over so I can figure out where to put the stuff so it'll do the most good. The box. No use wasting anything. Nothing like being economical. Nothing like being up to you mean. Science advances. And you gotta advance right along with it. That's why they're always sending for me, Bailey. I'm right up to the minute. You certainly are. Come on. Well, work. Wait a minute. Let's take a look at that room. That might be... That's an idea. Come on. What's in there? You are. The time and go wrong, baby. What are you frisking me for? I'm not a gunman. Powder is my specialty. Who hired you to blow this place up? Where would I be if I was to give away the secrets of my trade? I know where you'll be if you don't. It's against my ethics to talk. Well, maybe you'll change your ethics after you've been left in here for a couple of days. Sit down over there. What are you going to do? Now, don't rush me. Because when you rush me, my work becomes faulty. Gonna leave me here in the dark. Why, are you afraid of the dark? Yes. Well, in that case, I'll leave you light. So you're a dynamiter, eh? about time you showed up. Hey, who are you? Who am I? You mean to say you don't know me? I never saw you before. Well, I'm known from one end of this country to the other. And you don't know me. I got a reputation I have, and you keep me waiting two hours. They no wonder they want this joint blown up. Do you know what time it is? No. It's 10 o'clock, and you're supposed to meet me at 8. What do you think had happened if people saw me around here before this joint went bluey? I don't know. The Dicks had put two and two together, and the answer wouldn't be four. It'd be Bailey, and Bailey is me. I gotta be careful. Have you finished the job yet? Have I finished the job? I haven't even... There you go again. There's a technique to this business. And if you rush me, my work becomes faulty. That's what happened to me, old man. You know, he was a powder monkey. And one day he's working on a job with a lot of high explosives. And what do you think he does? What? He lights his pipe. But that's all right if he hadn't thrown the match into a keg of giant black. And quick as that, he's gone. That's what gives me an idea. I said to myself, if powder can do that to a man, why can't it do the same thing to buildings, ships, mines, anything else you want to get rid of? So I settled down to an intensive study of the explosive technique, and that makes me a specialist. Come on, let's go outside and see if the coast is clear. Let me know before you set it off, so I won't be around, will you? Sure. Leave it to me. Bailey get here all right? Yeah, about a half an hour ago. Funny little fellow, isn't he? He's funny all right, but I wouldn't say he was very little. He's got big, broad shoulders, a deep chest, and all in all, he's a pretty husky boy. Who are you talking about? Why, Bailey, of course. That isn't Bailey you described. He's a little thin fellow. Not the Bailey I was talking to. Did you mention any names? No, I didn't have a chance to. He did all the talking. Now you better disappear till I look into things. 
There's something wrong. Why the frown, little lady? She's not at all becoming. I'm worried. About what? About the way Tim Braddock is acting, and the way my father lets him do anything he wants. What's he done? He says he caught a man trying to dynamite the mine. He put him in the old powder magazine. He shouldn't have done that. The you... sheriff's the one to handle a thing like that, don't you think so? Do you want me to talk to Pete? I wish you would. Try and convince him that we'll all get into trouble if Tim continues to take the law in his own hands. There's one thing I must do first. Then I'll hunt up your dad and see what I can do with him. I know he listened to you. that you can treat me this way. Shut up. You want the whole world to hear you? Why, I care. You think that I'm... You're going to be quiet? How'd you get in this fix? By playing nursemaid to that mug you had me meet. Out of the goodness of my heart, I was showing him some of the tricks in me trade. And this is the way he thanks me. Say, what's the chances for one of them pills? You didn't let any names slip while you were talking, did you? Names are something never mentioned in this racket. Why? What's worrying you? You didn't meet the right man. You bungled the job. I'm going to have to do it myself. Ah, so that's the way you work, is it? Get all the dope out of me and then touch off the joint yourself. Well, all right. My life's full of ups and downs. What are you squawking about? You'll get your money. Slip the binders off and I'll be on my way. You'll have to wait until tonight. Why? Too many people around. What time tonight? After dark, about eight. But be sure you don't do any talking. And you'll be sure and be here at eight. Because if you ain't, I'm gonna talk. And when I do, I'll talk plenty. I'll be back. You'll leave here all right. I'll see to that. Hey, untie me. You're safer the way you are. <laughs> more money, we'll have to give it to him. Not a question of money. Braddock grabbed him. He's got him in the old powder room in the mine. How do you know? I saw him there. Well, Braddock or no Braddock, I'm fine. Fine. If we can convince Brennan that he can't work it, he'll sell for a nickel on the dollar. We'll, we'll be all right if Bailey doesn't talk. But suppose he does talk. It won't take him long to connect you with me. Just now, I can't send any investigation. Got any dynamite out there? Yes. I'll handle this myself. Braddock stopped you three times, but he won't stop me. Come on. Who's been in here? Nobody. Where did these cigarettes come from? They ain't mine. Whose are they? 
Think I'm a mind reader? Well, whoever managed to get in here didn't use his noodle, Bailey. Says you. He probably told you to keep your mouth shut. He sees right. You're doing the talking. Well, whoever he is, he'll be... But he's not going to find you. He's going to find me. I'm going to take your place. Come on over here, Bailey. Everything is set, Jepson. I'll take care of Bailey and head back into town. Set it off at 8 o'clock. Okay. Shot, William. I, I was protecting bank property. I was justified. Bank property? I just learned this man was going to blow up these mines. It looks like you're in with him. I in with Bailey? <laughs> you even know his name, don't you? You can't deny you were going to do the job together. Bailey could tell you different. Easy to say that now. Maybe that's why you shot him. That kind of talk won't do you any good, Braddock. Suppose we let Bailey settle this. Get up and give the gentleman a seat. down. Come here, Bailey. Is this the man who hired you? No. I never saw that gent before. And I've never seen him before. This man tried to kill you. You say you've never seen him before. Who did you see? Whoever he was, he sent Williams here to do the job. Don't you realize that? I ain't saying a thing. I guess that ought to satisfy you, Braddock. Well, it doesn't. Somebody was here visiting Bailey. And whoever he is, he'll be back. So we'll wait for him. That's a good idea. You and Bailey wait for him. I said we'll wait for him. Now sit down. What's the matter, William? Nervous? Naturally, I'm nervous. Nobody can tell what's liable to happen when dynamiters are around. They're liable to blow up this place. They wouldn't do that. Whoever hired Bailey knows he's here. You get him out first. Suppose you didn't want to get him out. You know a lot about this. You seem pretty sure this place is going to be blown up. Is that why you're looking at your watch? Uh-huh. I'm only trying to tell you what's liable to happen. Nothing is going to happen. How could it? Bailey's right here. He's not going to blow himself up. Are you, Bailey? Fool me? Don't be foolish. Have you ever in a mine explosion, Bailey? I'm here, ain't I? That's right. It must be horrible to be trapped underground. For instance, well, suppose someone were to blow this mine up. Yeah. There wouldn't be nothing left but the pieces. 
Well, that wouldn't be so bad. Be quick anyway. Huh? It must be awful to hear the sound of rocks and dirt falling all around you, knowing it's sealing you in a tomb. Men go mad in places like that. First, there's the hope of rescue. The lantern gets dimmer and dimmer as the air is exhausted. You listen for the sound of rescue. Suddenly, you hear the hammers and the drills up above, but you clutch your throat. That gasping, choking, suffocation overtakes you. The air is going fast. Every breath a man takes shortens the lives of the others. And then the light goes out. There's nothing but darkness, horror, and death. Buddy, on here! Take it easy, Williams. Don't let your imagination run away with you. This place will have to be blown up in a minute. What minute? I don't know. What are you worrying about? Unless you do know, and if you do, you're a fool to stay here and wait for the explosion. All right, all right. This place is going to blow up at 8 o'clock. We've only got a minute to get out of here. Who's going to blow it up and why? Jensen from the other mine. We were going to close this off because we found a big vein of gold underneath. I say, this place is going up. Let me get out of here. William, come back here. You can't get out that way. We've got just 30 seconds to get out of here. Come on, Pete. 